If you are wanting to do some winter and holiday manis, but reds and greens aren't your thing, then I've got the solution for you. What's up, Nail Crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer. Today, we are doing a blue gradient. I have been loving blues this year. I don't know what's going on. Typically, I'm a red and pink person, but I've been loving blues and some greens as well. We are gonna do this gorgeous wintry blue gradient. I'm gonna start with a white shimmer that's like an, like an off-white creamy shimmer, and then we're gonna go up through a dark navy blue. When I doing a gradient mani I like to have everything laid out and what I mean by that is I have all of my dips out and ready so I can quickly go through to do each nail for the first layer of the gradient and I have builder gel down as a base on my natural nail so I only need to do two dips of the actual dip color but if you don't have builder gel down as your base and you're just working on your natural nails you would want to do at least four to five dips of the color and you'd want to build an apex so what I mean by I build an apex is your first dip should be about halfway down your nail and it's just a little strip from the tip down the middle of your nail it shouldn't cover your entire nail then you're going to basically build backwards towards your cuticle so that your apex which is the highest point of your nail you have built one with your dip powders now i build mine with my builder gel so i only have to do two dips of each color and when you're doing a gradient you want to start with the lightest color on either your pinky or thumb and then work to a darker color that I typically go lightest to darkest so if I had wanted to start with the lightest color on my pinky I would have dipped my pinky first and the reason that I do it like this with dip powders is that when I'm brushing off I I don't have to contaminate my light colors with my darker ones and when I'm using my dip liquids I'm less likely to contaminate my lighter colors with some pigment from my darker colors. So I start with the light white shimmer and then I'm working my way through darker colors. Now, when I went to do this, I'm gonna be honest, I totally did not look at swatch sticks or anything. I just grabbed five blues that I thought would go well together and I was really proud of myself. I did a good job outside of what I feel like the middle nail. It almost had a sheen to it on my middle finger. So if I had to redo this, I probably would have picked a different one for my middle nail, but all the rest of the color ended up working so so beautifully together and even with the middle nail having a little bit of sheen to it I feel like when you're doing a gradient and um, there's a bit of a leeway on the colors like they don't have to perfectly go together because you want that you know gradient of light to dark so I started the first one I started with this shimmery white is called flawless my dear these are all from OG dip powder I will make sure I leave all the colors linked in the description. If you want to check those out, then you know which ones I used. The color on my pointer is called I Burn For, Me, For You. Uh, both the thumb and the pointer are from a Bridgerton collection. If you watch Bridgerton, if you're a Netflix Bridgerton person, then you know exactly <laughs> what both of those sayings are from. And on my middle finger, I used one called, um, it's called Up Yours Gustafsson. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. It's from a movie collection. I don't, I can't remember what movie it's from. Maybe Grumpy Old Men. I don't know. I have a terrible memory. But when I'm doing shimmers, I like to pour the powders over. And you see me doing this for all five of the nails on this one. I make sure that I pour each powder over and then I brush off the excess. And I had to be careful about brushing off the excess. I had to use two different brushes. I used one for the lighter colors and then one for the darker colors because when you're brushing off excess, you kind of get a little bit of staining on your stiff nail brush. And I definitely did not want to transfer the darker blues onto the lighter blues. The color on my ring finger is called We Duel at Dawn. That's also from Bridgerton. And again, if you know that movie, you're gonna know it. Or if you know the series, you're gonna know what that's from. And then the color that's on my pinky is called You Had Me at Coach. That is from a Ted Lasso inspired collection. Um, it's so funny. All these TV shows and movies that I wasn't into, I literally started watching because of collections at OG. They're inspired by names from all these different series and movies. So I end up watching them like, oh no, I watched Bridgerton long before that. But Ted Lasso, um, I absolutely love that. I started watching that after, after this. Schitt's Creek started watching that because of an OG collection as well. I'm, I'm really getting off track today. My brain is kind of all over the place. Um, I call my brain Brian because I often mistype it. And Brian, I feel like I left on vacation. I forgot to bring uh, Brian back with me from vacation. So it's kind of why I'm a little bit off <laughs> still. Yeah, I did come back from vacation like a week ago. But anyways, 
If you're doing a gradient and you find that your lightest color is just isn't like popping enough compared to the other colors, you can do a third dip or whatever you need to do. The builder gel that I have underneath this is a tan colored builder gel. And I felt like with the creamy, um, like whitish cream color on my thumb, it just wasn't quite popping enough as I wanted. So I ended up doing a third layer of that, but all the rest of my nails only have two dips. And I make sure that I top every single nail with clear dip powder as my last layer that helps whether you're using glitters flakes foils shimmers solids if you're somebody who likes to use dip liquids and you're going to activate and buff and shape what you do when you use dip liquids I highly recommend using clear as your last dip. It is going to seal that color and protect it so that when you're filing and shaping, you're not messing with any of the pigment on your colors. Now, I know everybody doesn't like to do this for solids and stuff like that, but I really found that it just works so well and your colors just stay so true if you do a layer of clear dip powder as your last layer. Even though I tend to try a lot of different things in my DIY nail journey, when I find something that really, really works for me, like using clear as my last layer, I tend to stick with it. So if you find things that really work for you, I would definitely stick with them. You know, if you're somebody who doesn't like to use clear as your last layer, then don't. But for me, it really works and I absolutely love it and highly recommend it to anybody, especially if you're new and you're struggling with doing your nails and maybe filing too much after you've activated. So once all your clear is on, you're going to activate those. Anytime that I'm activating, I like to wipe my activator brush on a lint-free wipe for the first activator that I'm doing before I buff and shape. Wiping it on a lint-free wipe keeps the color from staining your activator brush. And if you like to use lots of different colors, you don't definitely don't want your activator brush to be stained different colors because then that can transfer to another mani. And if you're still struggling with basic dip manis, then make sure you check out the first pinned comment. It is gonna have a link to my Ultimate Guide Dip Nails 101 that has everything you need from prep to application to removal. It's over 45 pages, it walks you through Everything I've learned over the past four and a half years, no gatekeeping, nothing left out, and it will really, really help you. Now we're gonna finish with top coating this mani. And after I activated, I let my nails harden, and then I buffed and shaped off camera. I have a whole other video on that if you want to see more buffing and shaping. Make sure I link that at the end. Now we're gonna get to one of my favorite parts of the mani is doing the top coating. I'm using OG Dip Powders Dip Liquids. For those you do one hand at a time, and you apply heavy activator, on all five nails. So heavy activator means you dip the brush into the activator and then put it on your nail, dip it back into the bottle and then apply it to your nail again. Then once I get to my pinky, I count to 10 and I start onto my thumb doing two to three quick strokes of top coat, making sure that you float them. Regardless of the dip liquids that I'm using, I like to make sure I float my top coat. It really helps that you don't contaminate your top coat and contaminating your top coat means that you would make it hard. So some dip liquids don't play nicely, the activator and the top coat. So make sure that you follow the instructions of the dip liquids that you're using. Once I finish my first layer of top coat on all five nails, I go back to my thumb and do my second layer, floating the top coat over each nail. Make sure you check out my next video, which is how to get perfect cuticle lines after you've dipped with the buffing and the shaping. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.